There have been numerous trials of witchcraft all over the world, with Britain seeing more than its fair share. One such case was the trial of the Pendle Witches. The backdrop to the trial of the Pendle Witches began in early 1612, when every justice of the peace in Lancashire was ordered to assemble a list of nonconformists in the area, like those who refused to attend the English church and take the communion, which was a criminal offence at the time. The Justice of the Peace for Pendle at the time was Roger Noel of Reed Hall. In March 1612, Noel investigated a complaint made to him by the family of John Law, a peddler who claimed to have been harmed by witchcraft. One of the accused witches was Demdike, who had been suspected as a witch for fifty years, and some of the deaths the witches were accused of had happened many years before Roger Noel took an interest in March 1612. The event that triggered Noel's investigation happened on the 21st of that month. Demdike's granddaughter, Alison Device, was walking to Trawden Forest, where she encountered John Law, a peddler from Halifax, and asked him for some pins. Metal pins in the 17th century were handmade and expensive, but they were frequently needed for magical purposes, such as in healing, prophecy, and for love magic, which may have been why Alison was so keen to get hold of them, and why Law was so unwilling to sell them to her. It is unclear whether she meant to buy them, as she claimed, or Law refused to undo his pack for such a small transaction, or whether she had no money and was begging for them, as Law's son Abraham later claimed. According to the 1613 tract, Pop's Discovery of Witches, the devil appeared in the likeness of a black or brown dog with fiery eyes, which Janet Device later claimed was a spirit familiar of her grandmother named Ball, which spoke in English, offering to lame him. A few minutes after the encounter with Alice Device, she said she saw Law stumble and fall, apparently lame. He managed to recover onto his feet and reach a nearby inn. At first, Law made no accusations against Alison, but she appears to have been convinced of her own powers. When Abraham Law took her to visit his father a few days after the incident, she reportedly confessed and asked for his forgiveness. Alison Device, her mother Elizabeth, and her brother James were summoned to appear before Noel on the 30th of March 1612. Alison confessed that she had sold her soul to the devil, and that she had told him to lame John Law after he had called her a thief. Her brother, James, stated that his sister had also confessed to bewitching a local child. Alison's mother Elizabeth was more discreet, admitting only that her mother Demdike had a mark on her body, something that many, including Noel, would have regarded as having been left by the devil after he had sucked her blood. When questioned about Anne Chattox, the matriarch of the other family reputedly involved in witchcraft in and around Pendle, Alison perhaps saw an opportunity for revenge. There had been bad blood between the Devices and the Chattoxes, which dated back to 1601, when a member of the Chattox family broke into Malkin Tower, the home of the Devices, and stole goods worth about one pound, equivalent to over one hundred pounds today. Alison accused Chattox of murdering four men by witchcraft, and of killing her father, John Device, who had died in 1601. She claimed that her father had been so frightened of old Chattox that he had agreed to give her eight pounds of oatmeal each year in return for her promise not to hurt his family. This tribute was handed over annually until the year before John's death, where on his deathbed John claimed that his sickness had been caused by Chattox because they had not paid for protection. On the 2nd of April 1612, Demdike Chattox and Chattox's daughter Anne Redfern were summoned to appear before Noel. 
both Damdike and Chatox were by then blind and in their 80s, and both provided Noel with damaging confessions. Demdike claimed that she had given her soul to the devil 20 years previously, and Chatox that she had given her soul to a thing like a Christian man, on his promise that she would not lack anything and would get any revenge she desired. Although Anne Redford made no confession, Demdike said that she had seen her making clay figures. Margaret Crook, another witness seen by Noel that day, claimed that her brother had fallen sick and died after having a disagreement with Redfern, and that he had frequently blamed her for his illness. Based on the evidence and confessions he had obtained, Noel committed Demdike, Chatox, and Redfern and Alison Device to Lancaster Gorm to be tried for causing harm by witchcraft at the next Assizes. The subsequent trial of the four women might have been the end of the matter, had it not been for a meeting organised by Elizabeth Device at Malkin Tower, the home of Demdikes, held on the 10th of April 1612. Friends and others sympathetic to the family attended, and to feed this gathering, James Device stole a neighbour's sheep. When word of it reached Roger Noel, he decided to investigate. On the 27th of April 1612, an inquiry was held before Noel and another magistrate, Nicholas Barrister, to determine the purpose of the meeting at Malkin Tower, who attended and what had happened there. As a result of the inquiry, eight more people were accused of witchcraft and committed for trial. Elizabeth Device, James Device, Alice Nutter, Catherine Hewitt, John Bullcock, Jane Bullcock, Alice Gray and Janet Preston. The Pendle witches were tried in a group that also included the infamous Samless Bree witches, Jane Southworth, Janet Brearley, Ellen Brearley, the charges against whom included child murder, cannibalism, Margaret Pearson, the so-called Pedayan witch who was facing her third trial for witchcraft, this time for killing a horse, and Isabel Robbie from Windle, accused of using witchcraft to cause sickness. One was tried at York Assizes on the 27th of July 1612, and another died in prison. Of the eleven who went to trial, nine women and two men, ten were found guilty and executed by hanging. One was found not guilty. Almost all of what is known about the trials comes from a report of the proceedings written by Thomas Potts, the clerk of the Lancaster Assizes. It has been estimated that all the English witch trials between the early 15th and early 18th centuries resulted in fewer than 500 executions. So this one series of trials in July and August 1612 accounts for more than 2% of that total. In modern times, the witches have become the inspiration for Pendle's tourism and heritage industries, with local shops selling a variety of witch motif gifts, and there is a Pendle Witch Trail running from Pendle Heritage Centre to Lancaster Castle, where the accused witches were held before the trial. The outbreaks of witchcraft in and around Pendle may suggest that some people made a living as traditional healers, using a mixture of herbal medicine and talesmans or charms, which might leave them open to charges of sorcery. Many of the allegations resulted from accusations that members of the Demdike or Chattox families made against each other, perhaps because they were in competition, both trying to make a living from healing, begging and extortion. The exact truth may never be known, but the trial of the Pendle Witches is the most infamous in Britain.